Hello, and welcome to MechWarrior Online. Today, I'm doing a review of the Piranha D. Uh, Deacon or Decacian or Dadian or I don't know how you pronounce it. It's a loyalty mech that they gave away a little while ago. I think around Christmas. And um, as of late, it's only come up that there's something that I really can put on this mech that I would really enjoy. And I tried it, and I think I really like it. And you'll see in some of the matches coming up. Um, but this, uh, it's an interesting kind of a build. Um, and it was only made possible by the latest patch. Let me show you this guy. Isn't this a pretty paint job? I really dig this. You know what this looks like? It looks like a miniature, uh, Cyclops, because it's got that big head and then, you know, the arm torsos and everything like that and the way it's built. It's got nice little shieldy arms, even though the mech is, like, super tiny and, uh, about the size of one leg on a Cyclops. <clears throat> so anyways, check out this build. So I've got six micro lasers, four double heat sinks, the biggest XL engine that this thing will take, and a beam laser right down the center torso. And it's actually not a bad location for it as far as height-wise to the, uh, the uh, head. Basically, um, here's the deal. It's in the center torso, and there's not a lot of really good options for overall height. I guess I could have put it in the one of the left or the right torsos but for me the symmetry just didn't work and i'd rather have symmetry than a functional mech so this is what i've done with it and it seems to be a, a pretty decent build we'll see on the battlefield uh, let's talk about it firepower 38.4 speed 148 and armor 134 out of 138 heat management 1.28 this is a non-Omnipod clan mech. So let's take a look. So what are we getting for quirks? Well, we're getting a C-build bonus of plus 30. Uh, center torso, plus 3. And then everything else looks like it's about uh, plus 4. Not a lot to really talk about here. So what have I done to this? Well, I've done two cool shots on the UAV. I've maxed out as much of the armor as I can except for the head. And this got me to where I am here. And this is a, a fairly cool um, mech build, as long as you don't fire the micros very often. I've got them set up in left and right firing for left and right sides. <coughs> when we go to the skill tree, a little bit of range. Max that on heat, uh, laser duration, which it's got to be fast anyways on the uh, micros. But, you know, a little bit more doesn't hurt. <coughs> Allow you to get in there and hit and quit it. Stick and move, stick and move. That's what you got to do with a light mech like this. Stick and move. Some people are putting more armor in their entire mech than this thing, or in their one arm than this mech weighs. Uh, so skeletal density, uh, armor hardening, overheat damage, got to have it. A little bit of extra speed tweak because that 149 ain't going to come by itself. Um, cool run, key containment, absolutely a must. Being able to... Uh, have additional uh, heat threshold uh, before going into overheat is absolutely a must. Target info gathering and seismic sensor. I, honestly, it's all about the seismic sensor, and on this, it's all about the radar deprivation. I want to go into cover and not be a target anymore. Uh, capture assist and two kill assist, or two uh, cooldowns and a UAV. And so when you get to the weapon groups, I'm just firing it as simple as it gets. I'm treating the beam laser almost like the way I treat um, LRMs and ATMs on my mechs as a, um, as a uh, distance uh, weapon. The micro lasers don't have a lot of range. Uh, when you look at these things, they are for close quarters battle, absolutely. They have a 150, uh, which is actually a 159 range in optimum range. And then the maximum range doesn't even really matter because... 2.4 at maximum range is virtually zero because at half the distance uh, they're doing uh, 1.2 damage, which I don't think anyone's even going to think about. But when you think about micro lasers being absolutely useless, think about this. I watched a guy in a piranha with uh, seven micro lasers kill a dire wolf, and the dire wolf was in pretty good shape. He took out the legs. He just went around him and, and tortured the guy, and it was absolute uh, torture to watch because it just, I've been that guy in that dire wolf. 
and I just hated it. But we won the match because of it, so it worked out that way. So anyways, so yeah, look at this thing. I mean, it's tiny. I mean, when we go to, like, viewing it from this scale here, we're going to walk all the way over to the corner. What's up, chick? Look at this thing. It's tiny. It looks like I'm looking at a full-size human being. I mean, granted, I'm not, but it's really, really small. By the way, that brings me to another question. If this has a solid stru roof structure, and this has girder walls all the way around, it says it's got an elevator, so I guess this, el this elevator goes up, but it only goes up on that one side. See? There, and then we go to the other side. This doesn't go up. So how the hell do we get our mechs out of these bays? It doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't. I mean, there's this big girder thing here in the way. We don't see any other uh, rail trolley things that, that uh, move us up and down. And when we go over here, there's a gate here. You couldn't get your mech out of this section over here if you wanted to. So this doesn't make any sense. This is just an elevator to get up to that local area up above. And I still haven't figured out how to do that. So this doesn't make any sense. This mech bay just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. They should have like a corridor, you know, where you can see mechs walking by or some shit. You know, it doesn't make any sense. But anyway, look at this thing. This is tiny. This thing is like slightly bigger than my Scion. Anyway, I hope you uh, like the review and I hope you like the matches that will be coming up. Um, and just look for them. You'll see them coming up.